Uh, the war rages on still, though. Ukrainians continue to struggle every single day. Now there are plans in the works for the Biden administration to send a Patriot missile defense system to the country in assistance with some of these latest air raid attacks, even overnight in the capital city of Kyiv. Uh, joining us to talk more about this is national security and political analyst and host of the Independent Americans podcast, Paul Rykoff. Good morning to you, Paul. So let's start with the Patriot Missile Defense System. For people who aren't familiar with this, um, how big of an impact could this have? Tremendous, Marnie. Uh, you know, I think I've talked about it on your air over the last couple of weeks, and I think it was the most urgent priority for the people of Ukraine. Uh, they've repeatedly said they need to close the skies. They need to stop the bombings and the missiles from falling on civilians, from falling on children. It's had a devastating uh, casualty impact. It's had an emotional impact on the people of Ukraine. And, and for months now, Zelensky and the people of Ukraine have been saying, close our skies. And the Patriot missile batteries are, are a strong way to do it. Uh, the Ukrainians want peace for Christmas. They're not, they're not going to get that, but they are going to get Patriot missile batteries, and that's going to help them shoot down missiles, shoot down aircraft. Uh, for folks that don't know, you know, we already send Patriots to 12 countries, uh, ranging from Kuwait to Spain. So this is something we've done in the past. Uh, we can do now, and will ultimately save lives. So it's, it's a natural uh, step, I think, in, in, in the expansion of this war and recognizing that the most immediate and devastating threat to the Ukrainian people continues to come from the sky. Right, and weaponizing winter has been Putin's M.O. for the last couple of weeks, um, getting ready for these cold months. Can these missile systems shoot down some of the drones that Iran is providing to Russia that are hitting the soft targets that are impacting Ukraine's infrastructure, the electrical, the power grid, the water system? We'll see. And they can definitely shoot down the, the larger missiles and ballistic missiles and, and the bigger casualty producing uh, aspects of the Russian arsenal. Uh, and I think it, it's, it's going to take some time. This isn't a flip a switch kind of thing. We're, we're going to have to train Ukrainians up to do this. I actually uh, trained to guard Patriot missile systems as a part of the invasion of Iraq. I was an infantry unit that was scheduled to protect these missile systems if they were deployed to Iraq. Most folks may know them from the Iraq war where they shot down scuds all the way back to the Gulf War. Um, but I I think this is going to help protect infrastructure. Uh, that's critical right now because uh, Putin has said he wants to freeze out the Ukrainian people. He wants to make them suffer. He wants to break their will. And it's below freezing in Kyiv today. It's going to be down below freezing and it's going to snow and, and rain and sleep all weekend. Uh, and we've got to provide whatever support we can from Patriot missiles all the way down to generators to just help civilians stay warm through what will be a very brutal holiday time for them. Yep. And Zelensky is asking for generators. You talk about the training. How long does training to use these systems take? Usually it takes a couple months. I mean, we've done it for Poland, which is right on the border, and we've got Patriot missile batteries right there. I mean, there are also other situations where we could send Americans who are already trained, but I think we've drawn a line and said we won't do that. So they'll likely train them in, in Poland or, or a NATO-aligned country and try to get them into the fight quickly. Uh, it, it depends on how soon uh, the Secretary of Defense Austin authorizes that. That could happen as early as today or tomorrow, and the president's got to sign off on it as well. Um, but they could be on the ground and operating by, by the end of January. And every day, that it takes is more civilian casualties that die. I'm glad to see the Pope and others are framing this as a humanitarian issue. It is, and I don't think this stops until Putin removes himself and his forces from this from this landscape. Yeah, Paul. Uh, what else in terms of weaponry would help Ukraine counter some of these Russian strikes? I think you know the, the next step is is aviation assets, and I know that the Department of Defense has been reluctant to do that. Uh, we haven't trained, in my view, enough Ukrainians to fly uh, the kind of aircraft we have in our arsenal. We've said we won't send NATO aircraft across the border, but that may become something that we have to entertain if Putin continues to ratchet up his attacks, if he continues to attack infrastructure. Um, we can create kind of a limited no-fly zone that would try to protect at least critical infrastructure to try, to try to keep the lights on. Obviously, that would be a new phase of the war, but I think we've got to remember that you know we're not escalating this. Putin is. Putin continues to push this forward. He's an invader. Uh, he's trying to commit a genocide, and we have to do whatever we can, not just to protect Ukraine, but protect the entire Western world, which he continues to threaten. Paul, you have said in the past that the only way out of this uh, is without Putin in power. He is showing no signs of backing down. Some would even go so far as to say, and I believe you had said on this program, um, if he's still alive, this doesn't end. Do you still feel that way? Absolutely. And, and Zelensky said as much this week in, in an interview he did. He said that, you know, the road to peace goes over Putin's dead body. I think that's true. I mean, of course, he could be in prison, he could be exiled, but until he's out of power, this won't stop. And I think that's the reality of the military situation. It's the reality of the, the geopolitical situation. 
Hope is not a course of action. We hope that this will stop. We hope that Putin will come to his senses, but we have to plan for him not to. And we also have to continue to support protests within Russia. I think the most immediate threat to Putin comes from within. And there are people in, in, in Russia who want this to stop, who want to see him out of power. And we've got to try whatever diplomatic uh, and, and other ways we can to support that, that push from inside to ultimately remove him from power. Well, and the Ukrainians are cold on the battlefield, but so are the Russian forces. And we're hearing that uh, the president of, of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has canceled his end of the year address. Uh, this is the first time in 10 years. What does that signal to you? It's not going well. I mean, it's difficult to address a nation when, when, when your you know, sons and daughters are coming home in body bags. And, and that's what Putin's got now. There is a reality to this situation that he will find more difficult to contain. There is social media. There is word of mouth. The Russian people are, are finding out the truth about how bad this is going. And I think they're going to continue to find that over the holidays and increase the pressure. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.